All right, let's jump into it. So this is so dope. This is the first time I've ever done this before, and I thank God that my parents trust me enough. Our pastors are absolutely amazing. Even when it seems like they don't know what they're doing, they know what they're doing. Any parent, half the time, y'all don't know what y'all doing, and then it just works out, and you be like, yeah, I, I knew. Y'all didn't know. That's called grace. But anyway, I'm, uh, we're starting a new series. Can you say rooted? rooted? Say it for real. Rooted. Rooted, rooted in community. So y'all get me for five Sundays, hey. including Mother's Day. So I just thought I'd let you know now that if you need to, wear some sneakers, strap them up tight, because we're going to do this thing comfortable. Say comfortable. So we live in a day and time right now where we have all of these different connections and we're tethered to people, but we don't even know them. We live in a place where people believe that the anointing of God is only good in this area. We, we believe that, uh, um, like, the Holy Spirit is only good when I'm connected to somebody uh, in, in this building. But we don't believe that when we break bread outside of this building that God is the same in that place as he is in this place. I'm not looking for your agreements. I'm just telling you. We live in a, a, a point, well, growing up in the 90s, we used to leave our screen door open. And growing up, we used to have people, like, walk in and out the crib, like, all the time. Um, people like Caleb Butler, David Finkley, Jason Finkley, uh, uh, Kylan Crawford, uh, people like that would just, like, walk in the house. I walk downstairs, they made a bowl of cereal and just eaten, and then walk out. <laughs> I could walk to the butler's house and eat a bowl of cereal, was good, and walk out. And there was no... Now... If I look at you wrong, if I like your post on Facebook, but I didn't like it quick enough, like I just posted two minutes ago, bro, my phone just got cut on. You know they've been playing with my service. Sprint is trash. Like I, like I just got it. We have families that have missed birthdays, Christmases, Thanksgiving, all over misunderstandings that happened years ago, and we don't even know why we're mad at each other, but I know I'm mad. We have people that leave this church and go to another church, and they don't like that church because they don't like the people there. But they never look at themselves and say, maybe I'm the problem. And if you ever find a church where people aren't hypocritical, please invite me because I'll leave this one. If you ever find a church where people don't get hurt, please let me know, and I'll go to that one. It's like we become so soft that we are afraid to become hurt. But God has called every single one of us to community. And the first part about, well, how you doing, brother? This brother looking at me like, what am I doing here? They crazy. The first part of being in community is understanding that I am going to hurt you. Look at your neighbor. Say, I am going to hurt you. Your neighbor didn't believe it. Look at the other neighbor. Say, I'm going to hurt you. It's, it's inevitable. It's absolutely inevitable. It's like going to the gym and then wanting to beat up your body because it's sore because you worked it out. But in relationships, we want to lift and we want to play all day. But when the soreness comes, we don't like that part. So instead of dealing with the person, we cut them off. In this series, say this series, this series right here, this series right here. There's something else I want to say, but I can't because I'm in church. This series right here, we're going to deal with community. So let's go to the Bible. Is that cool? Because I know a lot of y'all like, you preach the Bible. Like, just get over yourself. The Bible is everywhere. It's all over the place. But I'm going to go to the Bible for all y'all that need it. Let's look at the community. So this is the definition of community. Can you read it with me? It is a of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. The second definition is a particular area or place considered together with its inhabitants. What I want to teach to you guys today, hopefully, ho I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to speak and I pray that the Holy Spirit is the one that, um, that teaches and preaches to you. We get, so, we get to this point like where we glorify this position, and this is like the hardest position to be in in the organization. And, and, and we, we, we glorify it, and we want it, but then once you get it, it's like, I'm cool. I don't want no smoke with the glory of God. God, I can't wait to teach that sermon. That's the second time I've talked about it, no smoke. Anyway, um, so we're going to talk about community, and it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, so I want you to put your right hand up. Your right hand, brother, not your left hand, brother. Come on, dog. Okay, this is a disclaimer. Now say, I solemnly swear. swear. Y'all lying now. They're lying. <laughs> Somebody out there like this. I saw, say, I solemnly swear. To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. To myself. 
One more time. Say, I promise. I promise. I, me. I promise to tell myself. I promise to tell myself. The truth. The, truth. the whole, whole truth. truth. Not a part of it. Not the part of it that makes me feel good. Not the part of it where I don't have to take responsibility for my actions. Not the part of the truth where I don't have to think about the part where I should have said sorry. I should have apologized. I was wrong. You're right. You're right in telling me I'm wrong, but I don't like the, the mouth that it's coming from, so I'm going to be disrespectful. Not that truth. The truth that can look yourself in the face and say, you were wrong. So help me God. Okay, you just, you didn't do that to me. You did that to God. You put your hand down. He's going to get you. Lightning. He's going to get you. So as I was thinking about how to kick off this series, um, the one thing that I know is that everything good starts in Genesis. Like, absolutely everything good starts in Genesis. We use that word as a noun, as a verb, as an adjective. Like, this is the genesis of the story. And, and Genesis is where the beginning of everything happens. But what, what I want to do, hopefully today, is I want to help you understand what community is, why it's important, and why you can't do anything outside of it. There are people in this room right now that there are communities, it might be even be this church, it's families, people in this, in, in this place that you used to be close to. And then sometimes you ever have that moment where you look in the mirror or like you're taking a shower, you're eating lunch or breakfast by yourself, and you're like, what happened to so-and-so? Man, remember when, we used to, remember when we used to go to the Garden Cafe, Aunt Millie? Remember, it used to be like hundreds of us, and like they used to have to shut it down, and we would leave like a $1,000 tip for like one person. You, what happened? Remember that day where, like, my kids got sick and nobody called? They just showed up to the house and took care of our babies as we went to the hospital? Like, remember that time where I didn't have to call you to let you know I was coming over so you didn't have to hide all the crap that was going on in your life? Like, like, do you? Oh, I'm coming. Y'all swore. Five weeks, Seth, of this. Five. And I got fired every week. Every, every week every week. We're afraid of people. And in Genesis, God called us to who? People. And a lot of the times, we're not necessarily afraid of people. We're afraid of the reflection of ourselves in parents. Raise your hand. The characteristics that you hate most about your children, who do they come from? That's tough. That's tough. Why are you always touching stuff, man? Man, put your hands in your pockets. And your mom would be like, <laughs> I don't know if you remember in 78, you used to touch everything. Why are you always asking questions all the time, man? Why are you so inquisitive? And your dad's like, huh. hey, dad, remember this? Hey, dad, why that? So we, we, we start to look at people and we judge them based off of what we don't like about ourselves. And what God wants us to do is instead of us looking in the mirror and being upset with ourselves, he wants us to be able to look inward and fix what's inside of us so that we can have godly community again. A lot of y'all don't like living in the house with the people that share your same blood cells. <laughs> She's like, mm. don't look at him like that, sis. Don't do that. She's like, mm, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. Love you. But God's called us to community. Can you say rooted? In community. One more time. Rooted? In, all right, let's jump in the word. Anybody ready to take some notes today? Fire. It's about to happen. So in Genesis 1.26, before this chapter, God creates a whole bunch of stuff. Can you name some of them? Birds, cows, creeps. He creates. That's what pastor says all the time. I don't even remember what it is because he says, is it creepy crawly? What is it? Creeps and creepy things. He says creeps all the time. He creates all these different things, and, and, and then he, he, they, he himself and all the other people that are inside of him, the Holy Spirit, right, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, they, they, they decide that they are going to do what? Create man. So God spoke, and he says what? Let us, which means what? He's not by himself. Oh, I'm just about to get good. He says, let us make human beings in our image, make them what? Which means that they are going to be just like us. The Christian church and religion has, like, brainwashed us to believe that God is so much different than we are. How can you be born from somebody, look at them, and say, no? That, like, I don't, I don't get that, right? Like, when somebody can have a baby or sleep with somebody, they have a baby, then look at the child. That is them, the DNA. Like, scientifically, this is your baby. Look at the baby and say, no. But the church has caused us to look at God and be like, no, I, I can't be like that. 
where in Genesis 1.26, he says, you are just like me. So get this thing out of your head that I'm just, just, no, you are just like God. And this is a funny thing. I'll even go a step further, which is in my third, seven, uh, my third sermon, fire, anyway, where it says that you yourself are a small g. I just want to jump to the end, T. Like, I just, huh. So they came, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, all that stuff that he created. And yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He what? Created them. What I want to bring to you today is that you are a party of one. Write that down. You'll hear this lie that God created people because he was lonely. God is always has been, and will be forever. God didn't create you because he was lonely. God created you because he had some stuff that there was for you to do. Which also means what? He, he, said, he said, let who? Us make human man. Make, let us make man. Which means that God was not, he was by himself, but he was, there was, there was other people with him. What I want to tell you this morning is that you're a party of one, but wherever you are, God is the Father is, the Son is, and the Holy Spirit. So we're, we're, we, we run to people sometimes. We run to community because we think that we're alone. But if we're created just like God and God didn't create us because he was lonely, that means that when you're by yourself, you're not alone. Anybody ever feel that thing like when you're sitting by yourself and like you just feel, you don't know what it is, but it's like something like just like wraps you up? That's because you're not by yourself. God the Father is perfect. He's never left you, will never leave you. You might not be able to see him, but he's always there. God the Son is who we sent to the earth to do what? To die for you, to rip the veil, to bring purpose back to the earth so that you could have revelation and connection. God the Holy Spirit is the person who he sent so that you could have communication with him without him being here. So you're never by yourself, ever. So then get this, Genesis 2, 5 through 6. At this time, God made earth and heaven before any grasses or shrubs had sprouted from the ground. And look at, look at this. The whole earth was watered by what? There was no rain. In this next season that you're going into, you're not going to need rain. Because you're going to be planted in the source. I don't need rain if I'm planted in water. Like, I wish y'all could get, I don't need to pray for certain things if I'm planted in the source. My prayers start to change. It's not, God, could you give me, God, could you, it's, it's God, you're amazing in everything that you do. How dope is my day going to be today? Like, your, your, your prayer life, your expectations start to change when you're planted in the source. Somebody say source. source. So God hadn't yet sent rain to the earth because he didn't need to. When you realize who you are and you're walking in purpose, you don't need anything else. God hadn't yet sent rain on earth, nor was there what? Anyone around to work it. After this, so what, what does God do? He, he creates Eden on earth. He creates this place where Adam is able to walk with God every single day. Some of us, we, 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 we're not walking with God. God's with us, but we're not with him. You ever held somebody's hand walking you're holding their hand, but they're not holding yours. Like, we're connected. We're, we're connected. And it's usually girls. Hold my hand. He's like, man, baby, man, I ain't trying to hold you. Hold my hand. He's like, all right, fine. Grabs her hand, right? She's holding his because she's expecting for love to be translated to her. But he's holding her hand because she wants it. Some of us are holding God's hand, not because we want to, but because we feel like we have to. So God is with us, but we're not with God took the man and he set him down in the Garden of Eden to work the ground and keep it in order. God commanded the man. He said, you can eat from any other tree in the garden except for which one? The one with the, with the knowledge of good and evil. Because he says, the moment that you do what? Eat from that tree. Say, this tree. This tree right here. This one. Once you eat this tree, what's going to happen? You're surely going to die. Next point, where God planted you is good. 
So many of us, we ask the question, why am I at this job? Why am I in this family? Why am I, why am I on this campus? Like, like, why right now am I standing in the grocery line with this lady and her bad kids with 100 items in the 10 items or less line? Why, God? You, you, all I want is some peanut butter and some rice cakes. That's it. And she got everything. And Bebe's kids. Like, come on, dog. What I want to let you know is that in Genesis 1 all the way to the third chapter, everything that God says at each verse is what? It is good. It is birds. They are cattle. It is Eden. It is where I planted you is. Sometimes where you're planted, you are above the ground, so you don't see the nutrients that's in the soil that you're planted in. So you can look at the relationships, the people around you, and like you, 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 you can think, man, this place is terrible. I need to uproot myself and find new community. And what God is telling you is that where I planted you, I'm the master planter. Where I planted you is exactly where you need to be. When I picked you and I picked this soil, I, it, it's specific to you. And there are levels of soil, but you're a little, a little sprout. So if you just dig your, deep, your, your roots deeper, so many of us, we find God and we, we only do that much roots. We dig in that much. And we're like, God does it. God's crazy. God, God ain't worth it. So the wind comes and like we, we, we blow away. But your roots are your faith. So God says, dig your faith as deep as possible. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Dig, dig, dig deeper so that when the wind, not if, when the wind, when the rain, when you guys get upset with each other, when they say something that bothers you, when they do something that deliberately pisses you off, your roots are in the soil, not in the person. So look at yourself. Remember, you promised yourself. You said, hey, where I'm planted is good. I just might not see it. That, that I might not see that the ground that I'm in is good. Parents, you put your kids in a school system. You put them in situations that they believe is like going to rip them apart. My dad made me play football for the first five years, and I absolutely hated it. Big as heck, but I was scared. Hear me. I was bigger than all the other kids, but I was scared. So you got kids that are like 110, 98 pounds, soaking wet, flying around, hitting me, and I'm on the ground. And I, my, my dad, he let the coach coach me. Crazy idea. Crazy. He let the man spit in my face, curse me out, slap my helmet, push me on the ground. And when I came home, I was like, man, why would you put me in this, man? I ain't trying to be, I ain't trying to play no football. And my dad says, if you quit, though, if you quit, you're going to miss out on some things. How many relationships have you quit because you didn't see the significance in it? That you didn't see your own potential in the situation, so you ran off because you were scared. I believe that in this series, we're going to realize the weight of community and how important it is. You need some people in your life that got a sit down and shut up card. Yes. N- not that you give them, but they give you. Joshua, sh- shut up. Joshua, sit, da- sit down. You need some people in your car that say, man, put your pocketbook up. You always spend the money on dumb stuff, and you want all of us to come and rescue you so we can go on a trip. No, save your money. You need some people that, hey, you need to take that off of Facebook. If we rock in how you say we rock in on the gram, you need to take that down. But we don't want that because we want our coach to, like, it's the funniest thing. They have this new, uh, uh, this, this new thing in Omaha now where, like, coaches can't touch the kids, and they really can't yell at them, and the kids are losing games. I wonder why. So somebody misses a pass, and they're like, hey, Johnny. Good job, Johnny. I wish I had 10 Johnnies. No, you don't. You want one LeBron. I wish I had 10. He tries so hard. Johnny can't run. Johnny can't catch. And Johnny can't be coached. Your relationships are trash if the people that you're doing community with can't touch your life. A cool picture on social media is dope. But if you want to take a picture with me, Joshua Williams, I need to be up in and throughout your life. And you need to feel comfortable being in my Stop doing relationship with people that can't talk to you. What's the point of, be, what's the point of having community if I let you drink poison water? Some of us will allow people to be poisoned so they get sick and come back to us so that we can doctor them. Genesis 2, 18 through 20, fire. I'm coming for y'all, man. So once God sees, once God sees Adam, right, he, he plants him in the garden, 
And he, he, he gives him some things. So God says, bro, it's not good for this man to be alone. Then what does he say? I'll make him a helper. And a what? People skip to the 21st verse where God makes Eve. People are like, I'm going to make you a companion, so I'm going to give you Eve. No, no, no. Can I, can I break this down for you? So God formed from the dirt of the ground all of the what? Time out. Whoa. You said you were going to make me a helper and a companion, and you gave me work? Wait, no. I'm, you gave me a help. So you, you said I'm by myself. I don't need to be alone. I got needs, right? I need to be loved on. So you don't give me a wife. You don't give me a boyfriend or a girlfriend. What You give me animals of the field and all the air. Whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man named the cattle, named the birds, the air, named the wild animals. But what? Then God says what? But he didn't find a suitable companion for who? For Adam. Let me tell you something. God is going to give you a purpose before he gives you a person. God created a companion for Adam, and the first companion of Adam wasn't a person. It was purpose. So many of us, we run to community because we don't want to deal with ourselves. And what God is saying in Genesis is before you find a group of people, before you find a tribe, a pride, what, a stride, what else is out there, that uh, bride, you need to find yourself in purpose. And so many of us were like, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I graduated college. I got my education, bro. Where's my wife? And God gives you a job. No, God, but I want, I want my wife. Like, I want my best friend right now. And God's like, you are even your best friend. So why would I send somebody to you and you're broken? Iron sharpens iron. But two wood sticks are going to create a... So we try to figure out, there's so much friction in this relationship. It's because you're two axes without the axe heads. You're two pieces of wood that are trying to sharpen one another, but you're setting each other on fire. God says to Adam, before I give you somebody else that's going to help you, let me create something for them to help. A lot of us, we have relationships, we're in community with people, and we're doing nothing. Like, it's just the fact that we get to take a picture on Sunday. Like, some of us are in this room so that we can check off. Oh, I went to church this week, so I'm good, right? She said, no, I ain't me. Some of us are in relationship with people because it looks and feels good. But we're not doing anything. God says, before I give you Eve, before I give you a husband, a wife, a community of people to love, you must first learn to love yourself through the work that I gave you. Somebody say work. Work. Dr. Miles Monroe said, absolutely amazing, and I don't believe he's dead. I think he's on vacation. High key, if he walked through that door and looked at me, that's all I give him. It was good to see. Because my my, my spirit is still connected to people. Sometimes when people leave our lives, like, we just disconnect. You could be cool with somebody for 10, 15 minutes while you're having dinner, and then once they leave out the door, since I can't see you, I'm not with you anymore. Dr. Monroe said, Read it with me. If you do not know the of a thing, you will. So if you don't know the purpose for your life, you will always abuse yourself. If you don't know why God puts you on this earth, what the purpose is, we're talking about community still, but it starts with you. That's what I'm trying to get to. Like, that's the punchline if you want to shout. There it is. What God is trying to get to us is, Adam, I, I, I can't give you somebody if you don't even know who you are. You ever been in a relationship with somebody that needs to be, like, pumped up all the time? Like, words of affirmation is their first love language, but it's almost like words of defamation. It's just like every day, I love you, you're pretty, you're beautiful, yeah, you're getting thick, you're getting big, you're beautiful. Like, you, I got to, like, keep pumping you up because you don't, listen, it's, it's, it's like a balloon with, 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 you've never tied the knot. So I have to keep breathing into you so that you have esteem. It's called self-esteem. Self-esteem. It's what do you think about your If I have to build you up, our relationship is only going to be as good as the words I speak into you. 
But if you wake up in the morning, you say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything that I touch turns to gold. God, I will not be sick because you have a purpose and a plan. So by the time that you start to speak to me, I don't need it because I'm already filled up. Somebody say filled up. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing in relationships. We think we do. Like, we really think, these are my friends. That's my bestie. But do you know them? I know her favorite color. I know her favorite food. I know how to mix her favorite drink. Like, we're friends. But it's like, no, but do you know her soul? Like, when she's at home crying at night by herself, do you know... Like, do you, are, you, are you in communication enough with me to be able to name my tears? Like, that one's because of somebody that hurt him. That be, that, that's because of the, the $5,000 that, that he put in an investment and it all fell through. That's when everybody kept walking past him like everything was okay, but we didn't know him enough to be able to look through the facade that somebody's crying. There are people that are in your relationships, in your community, that are silently crying for help, but you can't hear them because we're not connected. People are in relationships like this. And, and we're deaf. And we're like, oh, that's so cute. They're playing moms. And these people are like, help me. Because nine times out of ten, people aren't going to see God. They're going to see God through. And we're laughing at them. Oh, that's so cute. And they're like, I need, I need some oxygen. I need some life. And the only way I'm going to get it is through you. Not saying that God is omnip- isn't omnipotent. Like, he, he runs everything. But I think that God is starting to, like, see, like, okay, I've been God for, like, ever. Will the God in you please stand up? I think, I think that's what God is asking. Like, remember, let's, let's go back to Genesis 1, He said, what? Let us make in. So if God can speak life into a dead relationship, so can. If you want a plant to grow, remember I talked about this a couple weeks ago? If you want a t- plant to grow, what do you have to do? You speak to it. There's an exchange that happens. Your plant needs carbon dioxide, and you need oxygen. So stop speaking poison to the people that are in your life because that's all you're going to get back. Genesis 3, 6. So God creates Eve, right? He creates Eve after he gives Adam a place, after he gives him some parameters, then he gives him a person. God gives him a place, which is Eden, He gives him parameters. He says, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this other thing. Then he gives him the person. We want to do it backwards. God, give me the person. I'll tell you my parameters of what I will and will not do. And then I'm going to choose where we do it at. And then when it messes up, then I'll come to you and say, oh, my God. She broke my heart. And God's like, You ever told your child not to do something and they deliberately did the thing and then came and cried to you? As a good parent, you always like, oh, my God, that's crazy. But as a, like a, a logical person, you're like, you dummy. I told you not to touch the stove. Oh, this, this one? I'm five. I'm dumb. I'm going to do it anyway, right? Like God is looking at us like, how many times am I going to have to save you from these relationships? You've dated the same guy 12 times. Not the same person, but the same guy with the same characteristics. The last one hit you? Let's, let's take it back. The last one yelled at you. The one before, the one after him, like, just nudged you. The one after him, like, pushed you. The one before him threw things at you. And now you're at this point where this guy is putting hands on you. And God's not saying that your situation isn't worthy of being saved, but God's just like, baby, sweetheart, do you understand that, that all of those guys have the same thing in, in, in common? And that's self-worth. But it's not them. You don't even see yourself as worthy enough to not have hands put on you. I believe that right now in this ceremony that we're in right now, that God is going to start letting you know your worth so that when people come to your life, they start paying the bill rather than giving you a tip. One of the most disrespectful things that you can ever do when you're buying somebody's product is try to haggle their price. That basically says, if I print a t-shirt for $20 and you come to me and you try to get it for $15, you don't love what I do. You're just looking for a handout. The same thing in your relationships. You're worth $100 million, Amanda. Stop settling for people that only got 10 cents. If you want to be in relationship with me, you have to pay the price. And if you don't have the money, I'm going to close down shop. Somebody say, close down shop. 
We have people that are in our lives that have not paid the price, but they're eating the meal. This is why I do not believe in this saying, like, if I'm eating, so is my team. Most definitely not. If I spent $20 on the eight piece of, uh, chi uh, of chicken at Popeye's with two sides and a couple of biscuits, you ain't getting no biscuit if you didn't put in on this. And if you don't have the money for it, you at least have to bring something to share to the table, even if that's good conversation. God wants you to do great, not just so that you can be a tree and give to everybody, but so that you can treat other, teach other people to be trees. Say, I'm worth a million dollars. I believe this is for somebody. You just stand to your feet. I'm worth a million dollars. Like, ooh, I close my eyes. Y'all say, I'm worth a million dollars. Look at your neighbor. Say, you're worth a million dollars. And tell them to stop settling for pennies. Take your seat. The only way that I'm going to let some pennies in my life is if they allow me to touch their life to the point where they got more money than me. The only way I want to be in relationship is with people that are better than me. Once we get on the same level, you can't be upset with me when I stop talking to you because I can't get anything from you anymore. We're in relationships that are dead because we're trying to lead each other and we're both in preschool. What are you going to do today? I don't know. But, but uh, what are you going to do? I don't know. Well, let's do nothing together. <laughs> Every relationship that you're in, if you want to grow, say if. if. If you want to grow, every relationship that you're in, you should be reaching up. Everybody do it. Reach up. These are the relationships that, 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 that you grow from. This is teaching. This is when you're being mentored. This is when you're mentoring somebody else. You get nothing by bringing somebody up to your level. But if we get to this level and you're still, I still need to pick you up, we should be holding hands and trying to reach to a higher level. Every, God wants community for you where you make the people around you better just by being there. Next, after uh, Mother's Day, I'm going to talk about that there's three different types of people that you need in your life. And God had them. He had the multitudes. He had 72 disciples. He had 12 that were his core. Then he had three who were his favorite. And then he had one who was like the homie. You need some people in your life that can tell you you got stains in your drawers. That's right. That's right. That's right. And won't out you in public, but will cover you in private. I think I'm going to title that sermon Skid Marks. It's going to be dope. How many of y'all coming? Y'all going to be here? Yeah. Skid Marks. You know how you shoot a zombie twice? Double tap, bang, bang. We need to double tap that toilet paper. You feel me? <laughs> so Genesis 3, <laughs> Genesis 3, 6. So Adam and Eve, after this point, they're in community. They're in relationship with one another. It's not sex. It's, it's, it's communication. Sex in itself, from what we've, we've understood, is communication. It's, it's you showing your affection through a physical act. It's not love. Sex is not love, right? So talking to somebody is not communication. Because communication means that you got what I was saying, you heard what I said, and we're in agreement. So many of us will have converse, we'll just talk to people and say like, oh, the situation's fixed because we talked about it. It's more so for our good conscience, but we don't want to go through actually walking with people. Before Adam and Eve touched anything, it says that they walked in the cool of the day with who? With God. Adam walked with God, which means that God was touching his life in so many different areas, telling him what he could, what he couldn't do. God, like, Adam, these are the plans for my life. And if Adam, as a husband, did what God told him to do, that means that he translated what God did for him with his, that means he's walking with his wife and he's saying, this is what we're going to be. This is what God told me. This is, this, this is what I know we can achieve. In every relationship, you need at least one person that knows God personally. If nobody in your group knows God personally, that's not, a, that's not a relationship. That's a cult. You mean that nobody in this relationship is getting new revelation? Nobody in this group can say, this is what God is telling us. And if you don't have that person, I believe that right now that you can get the power to become that person. To just Like, we work so hard. I'm not hearing from God. Just hear him. 
Because he's always speaking. We've just been so good at filtering out the things that we don't want to hear, and we don't know how to take that filter off because it was there since we've been little. So I think that God is like, I never stopped talking. You just stopped. So the problem happens once Eve is separated from Adam. Once you create space, something has to fill it. And most of the time, it's not going to be something good. The only time that God says it's not good is when he sees Adam by himself. He says, you know what? That's not good. All the way up until that point, he's like, this is good. Oh, this is good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. But once Adam is by himself, God says what? It is not for man to be alone. So that's the only time it's bad. The second time it's bad is once what? Eve leaves his side. How many times have we been in relationships and the hell and the, and, and the turbulation comes once we isolate ourselves. You make, this, you make this pact, God, I'm going to do purpose. I, I just rededicated my life to you. Like, everything's going to work out. Okay, boom. Now you give me purpose. Awesome. I know who I am. Boom. You gave me parameters. I know what I can do, what I can't do. Like, parameters aren't telling you that you can't do something. Parameters are just God saying, these are what your gifts are, so you're better doing this than doing that. We get so caught up on, you can't do that. And God's like, no, it's not that you can't do that. You just be better doing. So then afterwards, we get a person, and then once they do something that we don't like, we isolate ourselves, and we curse them, but we don't curse ourselves for walking away. Eve walks away from Adam, and now that space that God said was not good is there again. Sometimes it's not God, and sometimes it's not even the enemy that's attacking you. It's the space that you have allowed between people that you're supposed to be connected to. Because we give the devil so much, like, power. Like, I got an auntie, yo. Got an auntie. Hey, auntie, where your keys at? Well, you know, the devil didn't want me to find them this morning. (laughs) Call somebody, right? (laughs) Call my Aunt Jo. Hey, Aunt Josephine. And you got to say the whole thing. Aunt Jo. Mm? Aunt Josephine, how you doing? Um, So so are are you coming to my graduation? Oh, no, baby, if the Lord wills. Why would the Lord will for you not to be here? God doesn't want me to have a relationship. God God knows my sister and my relationship is trash. If he wanted to fix it, he would. God's like, she's supposed to be your help mate. But we don't help ourselves in relationships. So she saw what? She sees this tree, Right? And the only tree that she sees is the one that she was not supposed to eat from. So many of us have a lens that the only thing that we're interested in is the thing we're not supposed to do. So you need some community. Joshua, we going out. We know how you get when you see ladies. Not true, but we know how you see when you see ladies. Bro, I need to be by your side at all times. You need some people that know you better than you. There are some people, they wish ill things on people. And they want to be close enough in relationships so that they can see them fall. I've been there. Won't even lie. I'll never speak bad words, but like if something bad happens, I just want to see them like, yeah, see? And I, I'm glad that happened because you hurt my feelings back in the day. And I'm like, wow. My, my, I'm getting joy out of somebody else being as hurt as I am. So some of us are in communities that are poisonous. And we've now retrofitted our immune systems to feed off of poison rather than life. You ever been in a relationship with somebody and be like, why are you always so negative? Like nothing good is happening in your life? Like nothing? Like you don't even see you waking up this morning as a, like everything is bad? Like I know your dad left you. That was 30 years ago. He got like, is there any, nothing good has happened? Nothing? Nothing at all? Like, you didn't accidentally get an extra chicken nugget in your McDonald's bag. Like, nothing. <laughs> Dude, that used to be so lit. Like, hey, I got six of them instead of five, you know? Like, like nothing has happened. And, 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 and I honestly believe that, that, that what God wants us to understand is that in relationships and in community, the best place that you can be is with people that add to your life. Amen. And write this one down. It's okay to leave some people. What word did I use? Y'all hiding behind people. What word? Not all. 
Sometimes God will call you to somebody else or to another thing. But if he calls you to something else, he never does it out of order. If he calls you somewhere else, he unplants you from a community, he's either going to fill that hole or he's going to replace that person. So many of us, we make the decision to leave, and it doesn't give God time to fix the hole, so we create chaos. And then we make people feel bad for it. Have you ever had somebody tell you, like, you ask them, hey, how you doing? Well, I need to, I need to take care of myself. When was you taking care of yourself and attack on me? How are you doing? I just need some time. Okay, then take, take, take the... Wait a minute, what happened? All the men, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You're talking to your lady, your moms, your sister, everything's cool, and then she just drops something, and you're like, hey, what happened? What just, I missed something. Because if you're not good in this relationship and you didn't let me know, I'm not at fault. The part of community is communication. So if I look at you and I say, hey, Nana, are you all right? And every day you tell me yes, and you give me no reason to believe you're not, six months down the road, you can't say you're a terrible friend, I can't stand you. Well, wait a minute. We're in communication, and we're supposed to communicate. And about 20 minutes, ago, 20 minutes ago, we said that we're made like God, and God can do what? He can speak life into situations. So if you're not speaking in your relationships and they start to die, we're the ones that are responsible. Look at your neighbor. Say, talk to me. Maybe not them. You don't know them. Look at somebody that you know. Or close your eyes. Look at yourself. Say, talk to me. So the problem that happens with Adam and Eve is that there becomes a separation and something is able to move in. Once you create separation, something always moves in. Always. Always moves in. It's either misunderstanding, miscommunication. It's either a problem. It's Because the, the enemy, the devil, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The devil cannot create anything. And the word of God has said that, that Satan even had the thought of creating something other than what God did. And what happened? He got struck down like lightning. So Satan can't create anything. He can't create problems. All he can do is take what you're dealing with, the evils that are in your life, and he is able to manipulate those things. So if you have an issue with self-esteem and you create space between people that you're supposed to be connected to, all he does is takes your self-esteem and puts it in between you. Because the enemy can't be at all pla- Who am I talking to? The enemy can't be at all places at all times. So she looked... She, she, she sees the tree, and she says, that, man, this looks good for eating, and realized what she would get out of it. And she realizes what? That she would know everything. She took and ate the fruit and then gave some to her husband, and he ate. Then what happened? Immediately, the two of them did see what's really going on, saw themselves naked, They sewed fig leaves together as makeshift clothes for themselves. There are some things we are not supposed to know. This is the third time in the Bible, period, that God sees something that's not good. God said, I I believe that this is what God is like. God was like, Adam, you were never supposed to know her flaws. Like, you were never supposed to know what... What, what makes her cry. Like you were never supposed to see each other as naked and feel vulnerable. You were never supposed to see each other. Like, like there are parts of who I am as a person you shouldn't have to see because it was perfect in the garden. But now the things that we don't want people to see is what we judge our relationships on. If you loved me, you would just tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. And parents, this is what happens with your children. I'm about to put you all on game. I don't care about your kids. I care about them being great. I don't care about their feelings. It's about to be summertime. Your kids have a whole bunch of time. Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook, they do this thing called caking. You know what caking is? It's a process to make a cake. Caking means I'm putting in the time and the process to get your daughter or to get your son. So I'll spend an hour, two, three hours until it's like 4 o'clock in the morning talking to your daughter, daughter, telling her absolutely nothing just so I can get what I want. I'm helping someone. I'm not telling you to be like a Nazi, give me your phone. No, if you know your kids, you know your kids. And if you don't know them by now, if you don't know me by now, then you know what I'm saying? Like, that was, that was cute. Right here in this section, that was a doo-wop. I was waiting for somebody to be, who? For- <laughs> but your, your children can get away with things once they believe that their privacy is a secret place. Everybody needs privacy. 
You need a place where it's just you and yourself. But once that private place becomes secretive, now we're in trouble. You need privacy. You need time by yourself. And in relationship to you, go take your two-week vacation. That's bad. That's bad. But after that two-week vacation, you better let me know where we're at. A lot of us are saying, I just need time from church. I, I just need time from people. Church people, church people, they, they hurt me. Like, we, like we, 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 we expect people to hurt us out in the world, but if anybody hurts us in here, God forbid. So then what do you do? You take your privacy, but you do secret things in your privacy. Because when we're not in relationship, Kent, if you take a year sabbatical from me, you've been changing for those 365 days. And so have I. Your job and my job, if we are called to community, is to communicate what happened while we weren't together. My privacy is for me. I need my time. Sometimes I might need, because y'all crazy. I don't want to leave worship this Sunday. But my job is to let my worship team know, not just to leave them. Guys, I need some time off. But while I'm off, don't call me, don't text me, don't email me. Wait a minute. Whoa, wait. I thought we were thought we were connected. There are some things we are not supposed to know. God never wanted you to know hurt in relationships. God never wanted you to be able to recognize when you're about to get stabbed in the back. Some of us, we know it. This person's about to hurt me, so let me hurt them before they, they hurt me. I, I remember there was this girl I was really, really interested in, like, in high school, and, like, everything was cool. Thank God it didn't work out. You'd won. But at the time, I was like, man, this is it. I love this girl. And, like, Everything would be going good for like three, four months. And then out of nowhere, a fight would come out of nowhere. And it'd be like the, wait, what, what, what happened? And what I, what I found out later is that God was revealing to me that sometimes people don't believe that they deserve a good thing. I don't know who that's for this morning, but you don't believe. The relationship was amazing. The community was, you guys used to play baseball every Saturday. You used to be at their house every Sunday from like six until midnight. Like, and now y'all don't even talk anymore because sometimes we feel this is too good. And everything in my life that's good always dies. So let me just kill it myself. Wow. You deserve relationship. Amen. You deserve a people around you that know yeah. you. Yeah. Amen. So look at this. Write this down. Our lenses are dirty. The minute that Adam ate the fruit, the minute Adam ate the fruit, he became aware. In our relationships, it's not always what other people do to us, but it's what we do. In everything we do, we take responsibility. People in the Word of God are like, man, why, didn't, why, did, why did God just throw Eve out? She's the one that ate first. No, but Adam was the responsible one. In your relationships, just assume responsibility. God, you know what? If this group is not going to grow, give me the grace and the mercy to help this group grow. Stop waiting for somebody else to be the hero all the time. It says that when he bit into the apple, God said, God, so... Uh, it says that when he bit into the apple, God said, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, here I am, <laughs> over here. And, and, and God's asked him, he says, so when did you know that you were naked? Because God knew he was naked the, the whole time. God knows your flaws. He just doesn't want you to look at them all the time. God says, when you're in your privacy, in the secret place of me, you're supposed to be in worship. I'll deal with your issues. That's not your job. Like, but now... What he does is he kicks them out of the garden, and the issues that he was able to take care of as God, now they have to take care of themselves. When he ate the apple, his lens of how he saw the person was wrong. In situations in our lives and relationships, everybody has one. There was an incident when everything shifted in the relationship. You know it. There was, it, it became easier for you not to talk to one another. Like you automatically, automatically like your heart released that person. The problem with that is, Adam, for the first time, looked at Eve through the lens that he had and not the one that God created for her. Our problem is that we don't see people correctly. One prayer that I try to pray every single day is I say, God, help me to see my mother through the lens that you created and not the one that I've made. Because the one that I've made is always going to have a smudge in an area. It's always going to have a crack in it. Like... How I see somebody is always going to be flawed. How you see your wife, sir, is incorrect every time because you're not perfect. So instead of me trying to see people correctly, I ask God every single day, I say, God, like, help, help me see my sister correctly. 
Because if I look at her through the lens that I have, everything that she says is going to hurt my feelings because she's stronger than I am. Yeah. Callie is much stronger than I am. I have more endurance and I can lift more, but she is, she's so powerful. So God, if I look at my sister who can cut down the entire earth with her words, if I look at her wrong through my own lenses, I'm always going to be hurt. But God, if you would give me the grace to see my sister, how you created her and not how I've experienced her, will always be okay. Some of us in our relationships, we, you just, it's not that they're a bad person. I know what they did hurts you. I know. I've been there before. But God is saying, don't look at what they did to you. I want you to see them for how I see them. What would your relationships look like if you looked at your wife the way that God made her? Not how you see her, but how God, God created everything perfectly. When he created Adam and Eve, he said, this thing is. What if you took off your okay glasses and put on his good glasses and saw your people correctly? Relationships start with you being a good person and figuring out your purpose. God gives you parameters around that. Then after that, you have to change your lens in how you see people. Because if you, you, we, we always see people in the wrong way. So God expelled, I'm ready for, I, I want to show you guys something. So God does what? He expels them from the Garden of Eden. And he sends them to work the ground. The same dirt out of which they had been made. Remember when God said this ground is good? This is the first time that God says, you know what, the ground that I planted you in, it's no longer good, and I have to remove you from it. So for the first time, people are uprooted from where they were planted. One of the, one of the biggest problems that uh, I think that happens in relationships is where, let me ask this first. Have you ever felt like you were floating in a relationship? All y'all women better say yes, because it comes out as three, three, these three words. What are we? And dude is like, I mean, I pay for food. Like, you know, we, we are. No, she's like, no, but what are we really? What is this? I believe that God is really asking you. He's asking all of us. I believe that God is asking us, what, what are we? Like, we're going to get to the point where we talk about people being community. But I think that God is asking, like, where is the community between you and I? When Adam bit the fruit, God says, Adam, like, where, where are you? It wasn't that God couldn't find him. I love it when people say, when I found the Lord. Pfft, you didn't find God. God's been like, yo, I've been here the whole time. Shout it, like, where you been, folk? Like, I've been here. But we haven't made our eyes to see them. So I, I want to I do an analogy. Is that cool? Can I show you guys something? So um, is Miss Sophia here? Oh, the, I love you. But the other one. Miss Sophia an uh, Inquatra. So she does, oh my goodness, Vanessa, Miss Vanessa Inquatra, I'm so sorry. So Miss Vanessa, we had a conversation a couple, a couple um, months ago, and I asked her about, about pots and, and plants. And I asked her about what kills plants more often. Is it bad weather? Is it lack of sunlight? And one thing that, that, that she shared with me is that most plants die because they've been uprooted too many times. Anybody get it? Yeah. So um, plants die more often because you rip them out of the ground, the soil that they were planted in. So when you put the seed in the ground, it communicates with the soil and says, soil, give me what I need. But now you've uprooted that plant and put it in other soil that it doesn't have communication with. So the plant dies a little bit. So when the plant starts to die a little bit in the ground, you look at it and you're like, oh, my God, this plant isn't doing well. So what do you do? You rip it out of that. Right when it was starting to get nutrients because it's been there a little bit, it's made connections. So let me show you something. This is you. Beautifully, wonderfully made. Like gorgeous. Isn't this, isn't this pretty? It's, it's gorgeous. I bought it on Thursday, dummy. I should have bought it like this morning. So I had to like tend to it. I had to water it. I had to put, I had to fertilize it. Like, I, um, I, I need you to plug my computer back up right quick. I, I need to fertilize it. I, I needed to, please, thank you. I, I needed to give it some, some things so that it would grow. So many of us, we find God for the first time and we, we stop watering our faith. 
Had I bought this plant on Thursday and not watered it or fed it, it would have died or began to die. And I couldn't blame the plant for dying if I didn't water it. So this is us, absolutely beautiful and wonderful, right? And uh, in relationships, this is where God has planted us. And, and sometimes what we do is we just, um, we, 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 we strip ourselves from the good relationships that God put us in, like people that actually love you, because the word says it's better for, uh, um, it's, it's better for hurtful words to come from a friend than kisses from an enemy. So we're in here with God and everything's good and then we just, we, um, we, we rip ourselves out of this relationship. And then what happens is we, we try to find another relationship that's not as good as the first one because this one has no soil in it. So we go and we get some of this, which is called um, fake anointing and f- fake relation, like this is like, like fake anointing. Like this is, this is, this is not real dirt. This is something that they made in a, I'm preaching. This is a scientific lab. So we said, God, the dirt that you gave me, this, this, this wasn't good enough. So I'm going to take my own and, and I'm going to, I'm going to fill up this church right here. And, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to force my way. I'm going to force my way into a relationship with somebody that wouldn't have known me had I stayed in my place. But, but you know what, God? That, that person rubbed me the wrong way. The way in which they talked to me, like, uh, I mean, like, there, there's parts of me that, like, they, I didn't like how they talked to me. I didn't like the way that, that they, they said we were in a relationship. They asked me how everything was going. I didn't like how intrusive they were. So you know what, God? Like, this is another community that I messed up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go take my, 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 my fake anointing again. Because all churches are terrible. All relationships are terrible. I haven't found a good one, and it's always their fault. You know, I'm, I'm going I'm to take some more of this other stuff that I think is better than the dirt that you gave me in the beginning. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, oh, 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 so, so, so you mean I think my plan is better? And I can lose control? I can lose control of the relationship? Because you're the master potter, so you know exactly what soil I need, what, what climate I need. So I'm talking to somebody this morning. Like, you know what I need. But, but then you know what I'm going to do here? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force myself into this relationship. And this is what happens. Every time that you rip a plant out, the roots that it's grown into the ground, guess what? They stay there. So you're going to jump. If you don't hear anything that I say today. We jump from relationship to relationship, church to church, community to community, and we try to figure out why isn't this one any better than the first one? Because when you ripped yourself out the first time, the roots that were dug into those people, they stayed. Your soil is not anointed. It's God's anointing in his soil that's anointed. So then you get to the point where you come back. But wait a minute. What, what, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get back in this place where I was, but there's no, there's, no so, there's no anointing there anymore. Do you remember how pretty this was before? This is our lives. Because we can't honor where God planted us. You're supposed to be rooted in community, not rooted in this fake facade of relationships that we believe we're better for. So some of you were planted in this church and you don't like the soil and God is telling you, instead of being frustrated with the people, the other plants that are next to you, why don't you dig your roots down deep enough and get to the source? Oh my goodness. Is it, so I, 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 I want to show you something. This is you. The brown line is the ground that God has planted you in. So we understand in Genesis 1, 26 that God did what? He created us. And he planted Adam in the garden, right? After he planted him, he gave Adam work, which was his source. He gave him purpose. If you're in a relationship with someone or you're in a relationship with people and there's no purpose, you have no roots anywhere. 
And we also learn that when the wind and the rain comes, you will always be blown away because it's not about how good it looks up top. It's about how deeply are you rooted down on the ground. If I'm going to build a building, the foundation has to be twice as big and twice as strong as what is being erected above ground because it has to be anchored underneath. So God says, before you sprout out and say, hey, I want to be in relationship, dig down into me and find me. That's where your community starts is with you and God. And then the last thing is God, which is the stream. So I want to go back. Remember in Genesis 126, God is creating the earth and he creates a bunch of rivers, right? He, and and these, these rivers flow out from one place and they, they, they provide water to the entire garden. But one thing that he says in the 26th verse, remember we talked about it, is that they didn't need rain because why? There was water that was underground. This is the altar call. Some of us are struggling in our communities, our relationships, our marriages, boyfriend, girlfriend, coworker, best friend, because our roots are planted in them. We're, we're, we're planted together, and I'm broken, and you're broken, and you're broken. So instead of being planted, remember the one before, we have a source, which is the soil, which is great stuff. We have water, which is going to give us life. So instead of having a source and soil and water, we're just feeding off of one another. Have you guys ever heard hurt people hurt people? So if I'm broken and you're broken, the only thing that we can create is a mess. But I believe that God is going to call each and every one of us to a specific community. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's message. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you are interested in not missing any other videos that we upload, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. Also, if this message has impacted you in such a way, you can also click the link down below to donate and to give to our ministries here at Ambassadors Worship Center. Anyway, thank you so much and we'll see you next week.